directors, they, uh, I believe it's uh, Aaron that shoots the films uh, as cinematographer and wow. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they both edit them. So they're kind of jacks of all trades. And then now we know they can act. Yeah. Like with legitimate screen presence. The end of it, <laughs> the end of it, man. I just liked both of them so much. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron is like, has this kind of vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, a kind yeah, of yeah. Innocence. Yeah. And Justin is very like, like, uh, tough and he, he exudes this kind of like machismo in a way mm -hmm. that's and it a... all and it's just like all and they're also directing themselves yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what though that just adds so much freedom because you're not hiring you know like they can put them like uh you know oh gosh the guy in uh jeremy saulnier's movies he's in blue ruin uh he's also mm -hmm. in green room and hold the dark he directed um I don't feel at home in this world anymore. But now that, you know, they can act, they can insert themselves into roles, not pay play, uh, pay day players or, you know, people who would be on the screen for a week. And that leaves more money for them for something else now. They also do their own visual effects, which is astounding. Well, I, hate, I hate these guys. I hate them. <laughs> Just, stop <laughs> doing this, guys. You're making us all look bad. Stop it. You the endless. I only know two of these five things. You know, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, They're I'm good at all. Ugh. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. But uh, this movie, it's on sale on Voodoo right now for five dollars. Maybe when you listen to this podcast at night, but might not be. But their commentary on their Blu-ray, which you can probably get for about eight bucks on Amazon, is really worth listening to. So if you're listening mm -hmm. to this and, you know, you might have seen it on Netflix and you like it, I recommend you buying the Blu-ray to listen to their commentary. So I'm promoting their movies more. How about yes. this, Zach? Let's go buy their movies right now. And when we come back, we'll jump into the top ten. Hey, look, I have already owned Resolution. I already own Spring. I own VHS 3, which they have <laughs> a short film in that. Bone Storm, I oh. think is what it's called. I haven't seen it. Is that the viral one? Yeah. All right. I need to watch. Dang it, Aaron and Justin. Stop it, guys. That VHS viral is a really good VHS movie. It, like the the second and the third shorts are some of the best horror shorts you will find. I bought Spring from a vending machine in Austin, Texas, from Alamo Draft House. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on that bombshell, let's uh, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Movies, Films, and Flicks. Zach and I both now own seven copies of The Endless, in case we want to watch it more than once. We have an endless amount of <laughs> opportunities. Why did I say that? Oh, I man. don't know. I thought you were going with it. <laughs> That's perfect. What a, what a good one, man. Hey, All right. we're, starting over. we're starting over. Welcome back to Movies, Films, and Flicks. Zach and I now own an endless amount of the endless Blu-rays. Isn't that right, Zach? You're so clever. <laughs> All right, top ten time. Top ten. Top ten. Let's do this. Cam. Starring Cam. A very, very, very good performance from Madeline Brewer. Yes. I mean, Cam she, is... Oh, go for it. She has a lot on her plate. She's at, like, a buffet, and everything's on her plate for this movie. I was surprised at how much I have seen her in other things and did not realize. Wait, what's she like, doing? She was in Orange is a New Black in the first season. She had cornrows and died in the first season. Sorry, spoilers. Uh, she's in The Handmaid's Tale, where she is a little too sassy and gets her eye cut out in the first episode. Jeez Louise. And she is in this movie, Cam, which took me completely by surprise. Like, it came out of nowhere, just on Netflix one day. And it is... It, ranked number four on my list as one of the best films of the year or, or best horror films of the year. It's a little lower on my films, but cam there, there are a few like little dangling plot threads. Uh, I think that you could complain about that maybe take a few leaps of logic, but I don't buy into that as much because I don't think there's a real established firm reality. I think it's, this kind of scenario for f that's really fertile for a, 
uh, the, all these like analogous scenes in which a main character has to kind of confront her persona. Yeah. I think, I think I said in my review, it's like persona by way of body double by way of unfriended. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> well, I like that. I mean, yeah. and if you, if you don't know what it's about, it's a, a, a cam girl whose account gets hacked and she sees that someone is live streaming and that someone is, I looks identical to her. So she has to now, you know, deal with the situation and sometimes interact with the double as a customer. And you have all these like great scenes of like mirrors and, and, it's a it's a really great doppelganger horror movie using, uh, you know, digital, you know, the digital social media we have today. I think it features. The it best was, in, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. And it was written by a former cam girl. Yeah, the authenticity. I've never done any of these, but the authenticity to it felt real. I just felt and mm -hmm. I guess the director that that was brought in had directed some of her videos. Yes, uh, the director, Daniel... whose name is Daniel Goldhaber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he uh, he had, apparently he had dated the, uh, ooh, who's the writer? What is the writer's name? <laughs> uh, insert here uh, when I edit the podcast later, or I'll forget and you'll just listen to this. Issa uh, something. Yeah. Kudrow. Insert that name. <laughs> Lisa Issa Kudrow, Kudrow yes. <laughs> like, Issa... Isa uh, Mazai. Isa Mazai. Yes. Isa yeah. Mazai. Uh, apparently, they had uh, they had a relationship in the past, and uh, they remained friends. And she became a cam girl after that. And he was a uh, film student, a film graduate at Harvard in the Harvard Film Program. And you know, after he graduated, he would direct some of the cam stuff and he got really interested in this kind of world. Uh, he has a really good interview on the Cinephiliacs podcast where he kind of uh, discusses all of this uh, and how, how it led them to develop this project, which they wanted to do a, basically a horror film set in this cam world. Yeah. Um, no, uh, it, and it oh. works. And it's just it's it's very I, I, it's not slashery at all. It's just like a not psychological. It's more. Is it a psychological horror? Like what? Body double, best nose breaking. Uh, oh my god! Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, this movie is really. I didn't. So I saw it on a bunch of lists. I watched it, and the world just sort of had me immediately. I know this is going to sound weird. I don't know what you think about this, but that also the 2018 movie, The Babysitter. Uh, a lot of people give it <laughs> flack, directed by Mick G. But that movie, I also, the world was established almost immediately. In that movie, you watch it for 10 seconds. You're like, oh, I'm on the vibe of this movie for this one. As soon as it turns on, you're like, I'm on the vibe of this film and just the way it mm -hmm. moves forward. The actress, I mean, just the performance. I mean, she's just like just to keep up that energy that she had for that performances. It just drew me in immediately. Yeah, and just think about how many things she has to do in that film. Yeah. Like she has to be uh, her character, the persona the persona that is hijacked and <laughs> and this kind of third like in between place there's a great scene in it where she is trying to get up to the top 50 of the cam girls and she breaks it she breaks into the 50 and you know she has confetti all planned and as it's happening another cam girl played by the wonderful Samantha Robinson, the love witch herself. Yes. Oh, that's which, the love witch. That's the love witch as her kind of nemesis cam girl. Wait, really? I uh, love. I love yeah. the love witch. Holy that movie! What a what a cheeky little movie. All right, sorry. <laughs> uh, is uh, trying to get her to drop rank, and you're watching uh, Madeline's character, Madeline Brewer's character, watch her ranking fall, but she's still alive. So she has to play off that she's not seeing that happen. So she's Jeez. like, thank you guys so much as it's dropping, dropping, dropping. And you're seeing her eyes look there, look down there, uh, look at uh, Samantha Robinson's character. And all of this is happening and her performance is still she's trapped in the persona that she can't like let anyone on to the fact that <laughs> she's devastated that she's dropping in rank. 
And it's a lot of stuff to pull off in that scene. It kind of becomes the, that's the moment where she loses control of her persona in terms of the plot. Yeah. Like the next, the next day she's hacked. Yep. Man. Well, no, the next day she has to go. Sorry. I got that wrong. The next day she has to go on the Vibratron. Oh, that's what it is. And then she really loses control because sitting on that it's not thing. something she wanted to do. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> sounds awful. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess we'll move on to nine, which is Steven Soderbergh's iFilm iPhone shot unseen, which features my favorite, one of my favorite performances of the year from Claire Foy. Uh, loved watching yes. her in this. I, I was used to watching her in the crown in season of the witch and just very reserved. But uh, I called her like a wombat in this movie. She's just all over the place. She's caustic. She's, you know, she'll, she'll, She'll knock the smack out of, um, oh man, who's, the, I forget her name, the actress that always plays like a Juno Temple. She'll just rough her up, no problem, just kick her ass. Uh, she's just an a awesome live wire in this movie. And of every movie on this list, this is the one that just made me slink in my seat. Like, I just, you know, and I watched it, uh, I, I don't care, guys, get over yourselves. I watched it with my wife, even if you're going to say something, I don't know if you were. But she was getting stressed out because she's like, this is could happen this is crazy like this this movie you're watching it and this this dread that's hitting her and, and then the beginning and when you see this guy and then when she first meets her stalker oh i don't want to give anything away but when she sees him she's calling him out i mean it's what a what a great performance and you know the camera work at first you're a little thrown off by it but once you get into that world you really just buy into it and it's just a a live wire by performance from a director having a fun time yeah, I I really like this movie a lot, and I love Claire Foy's performance. This just the the helplessness of the process of committing yourself. <laughs> just you have given up all of your rights to for you know self agency, and the movie cap captures that perfectly. Uh, if you're ever be been in an unfortunate situation where you have a loved one that has committed themselves or has themselves committed uh it is pretty stunningly accurate in the most uncomfortable way possible just no one's listening to me no one's believing me anything i say i didn't uh sign i don't remember signing this yeah 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 we've heard it all before just go to your room here are some crazy people yeah uh, isn't, it, isn't this movie a stress bomb? It is a stress bomb. I had to like tell people, guys, uh, d don't don't watch this. <laughs> like, it's a great movie. Just it's a little too much for certain people. Yeah, um, I can see that. The iPhone cinematography is pretty spectacular. Uh, kind of, you know, it even uses the aspect ratio of the iPhone, which I respected. Mm -hmm. I I think they probably use some kind of uh, capture device to make sure it looked as good as it did, but it still was really interesting. And in that the, you know that one lens that there you can only use with the iPhone is is used so perfectly. Uh, I think the movie does lose a little something once you find out what's happening. It's uh, it's revealed uh, halfway through, and the uh, the guy that plays the stalker that may or may not be there. Uh, is Joshua Leonard from Blair Witch. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Which which blew my mind. Like, whoa, hey, there he is. <laughs> hey, well, I'm glad he's staying busy. I'm glad he's Ish. staying busy. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so Soderbergh, you know, this retirement, Soderbergh, I think it's uh, it's working out because we keep getting good movies from you. Yeah. So, you know, stay retired. And uh... <laughs> Logan Lucky, I adore Yes, Logan Lucky is a very good movie. And he also, he didn't direct Magic Mike Double XL, but he did shoot it and edit it. And he was just there, probably guiding the guy. Well, as if you're the cinematographer, you have to be. So. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right, uh, let's move on to number eight, which is a movie I absolutely love. Uh, and it got actually eight points because of me, and that's Ravenous. It is a uh, Quebecian horror film uh, about zombies. That is currently on Netflix. And did you have you watched this movie, Zach? Not only have I not watched this movie, this is the first time I'm even hearing about it. Oh yeah, it's so, <laughs> so it, I have 
nothing to add to this. Okay, I won't go in, in too, too much in depth, but it's just a zombie movie. Now, all right, I don't want you taking this as an insult. When you watch it, you're like, oh, this is like an 